I grew up in a pretty standard family, just me and my folks living in a small, cozy house at the edge of town. My dad worked the late shifts at the factory, and my mom was a cashier at the local grocery store. Money was tight, but we got by. I was their only kid, and they poured all their love into me, even though I wasn't the easiest child to care for. From a young age, I was always the sickly one, catching colds that seemed to linger for weeks and struggling with a bunch of allergies that kept me indoors more than out. I was thin, way too thin for my age, and my clothes, well, let's just say fashion was the least of our concerns. School was a battlefield. I tried to blend into the background, but somehow I always stood out, and not in a good way. My classmate Sarah made sure of that. Sarah was everything I wasn't, popular, pretty, and always dressed like she was about to walk into a photo shoot. One day, trying to dodge the bullies, I was late to class. Slipping into my seat, I hoped for a quiet day. That hope vanished the moment Sarah noticed me. Look who decided to show up. Sarah sneered loud enough for the whole class to hear. Thought you were too sick to come to school, or did you finally find something to wear that didn't come from a charity gun? Her friends laughed, echoing her cruelty. I wanted to disappear, but there was nowhere to hide. I kept my eyes down, whispering, just leave me alone, Sarah. What was that? She mocked, stepping closer. Can't hear you, speak up. Before I could muster a response, Mr. Jenkins, our math teacher, entered the room, cutting off whatever Sarah had planned next. The rest of the day, I kept to myself, speaking only when spoken to. And even then, my words were barely above a whisper. At home, things were different. It was my safe haven. My parents, seeing my downcast eyes at dinner, exchanged worried glances. Nellie, honey, you barely touched your food. Something happened at school today. My mom asked, her voice full of concern. I shrugged, pushing my food around my plate. It's nothing, just tired, I guess. My dad, quiet until now, put down his fork. You know, Nellie, you can talk to us. Whatever it is, we're here for you. I nodded, knowing they meant every word, but explaining the day's humiliation felt impossible. Thanks, Dad. I'm just really tired. Think I'll head to bed early. Dragging my feet toward the school gates, I braced myself for another day of dodging glares and whispered insults. My backpack felt like it weighed a ton, loaded with textbooks, and the heavy dread of facing Sarah and her clique. As I navigated the crowded hallways, trying my best to become invisible, I heard the all too familiar voice that made my stomach twist in knots. Hey, ghost girl, <laughs> try not to vanish before class starts. Sweetheart, <laughs> one of Sarah's <laughs> loyal sidekicks. This nickname for me, a jab at my pale complexion and tendency to keep to myself, echoed off the lockers, drawing snickers from nearby students. I quickened my pace, face down, not daring to look up. Just ignore him, I muttered to myself, but the words felt hollow. The day's first challenge was surviving. Mrs. Parker, ever oblivious, droned on about the importance of attendance just as I slipped into my seat at the back. I barely settled in when Sarah, draped in her latest fashionable outfit, sauntered in with her interage in tow. Nice of you to join us, Nellie. We were worried you got lost in your closet of hand-me-downs, Sarah quipped loudly, tossing her hair as she passed my desk. A chorus of laughter followed. I clenched my fists, feeling the heat rise to my cheeks. Just leave me alone. I shot back quietly, more to my desk than to her. What was that, Nellie? Speak up. We can't hear you, Sarah taunted, turning to face me with a smirk. I shook my head, choosing silence over a battle I couldn't win. The bell rang, a temporary reprieve, but the relief was short-lived. 
Each class transition felt like running a gauntlet, with Sarah and her crew lying in wait to hurl their next insult or snide comment. Lunchtime was no sanctuary either. I found a secluded spot under an old oak tree, a safe distance from the cafeteria chaos and cruelty. As I nibbled on my sandwich, thoughts of just disappearing consumed me. Hey, why are you sitting all by yourself here? A voice interrupted my solitude. I looked up to see Jake, a guy from my English class. He wasn't one of Sarah's crowd, but I was wary all the same. Just like the quiet, I replied, hoping he'd take the hint and leave me be. He shrugged, unfazed, and sat down beside me. Suit yourself. Sarah's being a real piece of work, huh? I was taken aback by his bluntness. You could say that, I admitted, surprised by my own candor. Listen, Nellie, you can't let her get to you. She's all talk, Jake said, his tone earnest. I wanted to believe him, to find the strength to stand up to Sarah, but the words felt like a distant dream. Easier said than done. I mumbled, my gaze fixed on the grass below. The bell signaling the end of lunch snapped me out of my reverie. Gathering my things, I offered Jake a small smile. Thanks for, you know, sitting with me. No problem. See you around, Nellie, he said, heading back to the building. The rest of the day passed in a blur. With each class, I counted down the minutes until I could escape back to the safety of my home. But the day wasn't without its lessons. Jake's unexpected kindness was a glimmer of hope a reminder that not everyone was against me. School had become a nightmare for me, one I couldn't wake up from. Every day was a repeat of the last, dodging insults, hiding from Sarah and her gang, and trying unsuccessfully to blend into the background. It wasn't long before the stress of it all started to take a real toll on me. I found myself feeling physically sick, my old ailments flaring up with a vengeance alongside new ones, headaches, stomach aches, you name it. I was a mess inside and out. One evening, I was curled up on the sofa, a blanket wrapped around me, trying to shake off the latest in a long line of migraines when Grandma came over. She had this way of seeing right through you, and that day was no different. <laughs> Nellie, this isn't just about being sick. Is it? She asked, her voice soft and firm. I tried to shrug it off. I'm fine, Grandma. Just tired. She wasn't having any of it. Nonsense. You're sick, yes, but it's not just physical, is it? It's those kids at school, isn't it? I hesitated, then the floodgates opened. I told her everything about Sarah, the bullying, the constant dread that filled my days. Grandma listened, her expression growing more concerned by the minute. When I finished, she sighed deeply. Nellie, your body is reacting to your stress and anxiety. It's making you ill. All these problems with your classmates are affecting your health. I was stunned. Could my being bullied be the reason I was always sick? Seeing my confusion, Grandma explained further, stress can have a real physical impact on your body. It's important we address not just the symptoms, but the cause as well. The next day, Grandma sat down with my parents and me to discuss a plan. It was clear that continuing to attend school wasn't an option, not if things stayed as they were. After much discussion, my parents decided to switch me to distance learning. It was a big change, but one that felt necessary. The difference was night and day. Away from the constant harassment and anxiety, I started to heal. My headaches became less frequent, my stomach settled, and I found myself actually able to concentrate on my studies without the looming shadow of Sarah and her taunts. I was sitting at the kitchen table one afternoon, working through a set of math problems when mom came in to make a cup of tea. She watched me for a moment, then said, you seem different, Nellie. Better, happier even. I hadn't really thought about it, but she was right. I guess I am, 
I admit it. It's weird not having to worry about what's going to happen at school every day. Mom nodded, a relief smile spreading across her face. I'm just glad to see you feeling better. We should have done this sooner. The transition wasn't without its challenges. I missed the few friends I had, and adjusting to a new way of learning took time. But as days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, I found myself grateful for the change. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I could breathe. One morning, as I logged onto my first virtual class, my mom knocked softly on my door. Nellie, are you okay with this? Missing your friends? She asked, peeking in with a concerned look. I paused, considering. Kind of, I admitted, but it's better than before. At least I can focus now. She nodded, her eyes softening. You just shout if you need anything. Okay, I'm right downstairs. As the days turned into weeks, I found a rhythm to my new routine. The subjects I used to struggle with began to make sense. Thanks to the absence of distractions and the patient guidance of my online teachers. One afternoon, after a particularly successful math session, my dad came home early and found me at my desk. Look at you, acing your classes without those bullies breathing down your neck, he said with a grin, ruffling my hair. I couldn't help but smile back. Feels weird, Dad. Good weird, though, like I can actually do this. That's cause you can, Nellie. Always could, he replied, pride evident in his voice. Yet it wasn't all smooth sailing. The lack of social interaction began to weigh on me. I missed the face-to-face -face conversations, even the ones that weren't always kind. The silence of the house, once a sanctuary, started to feel more like a cage. I started to look for ways to fill the social void. I joined online study groups and even started a virtual book club with a few classmates I'd reconnected with. It wasn't the same as hanging out in person, but it helped. One evening, as I closed my laptop after a long study session, my grandma called. How's my favorite granddaughter? She asked, her voice warm and comforting. I'm your only granddaughter, grandma, I teased, smiling at our ongoing joke. Details, details, she chuckled. How's the distance learning going? It's good, actually. I mean, I miss seeing people, but I'm doing better in school now. I shared, feeling a sense of achievement. That's my girl. You're stronger than you know, Nellie. Don't forget that, she said, her words lifting my spirits. Prom night was something I had dreaded for months. The very idea of attending filled me with anxiety. My parents, however, thought it would be good for me. A chance to close this chapter on a high note, as they put it. Despite my protests, I found myself <laughs> nodding <laughs> along to their encouragement. <laughs> it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, Nelly. You might regret not going, Mom said, her eyes hopeful. <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to argue further, even though every fiber of my being screamed against it. <laughs> so there I was, <laughs> in a simple dress that my mom and I had picked out, standing awkwardly at the back of the gym, trying my best to blend in with the walls. The gym was transformed, barely recognizable with all the decorations and lights. Groups of my classmates, all dressed up, were laughing and dancing, enjoying the night. I couldn't help but feel like an outsider, watching the festivities from my lonely corner. As the evening dragged on, I decided to make a quiet exit. No one would notice I was gone anyway. But just as I was about to slip out, Sarah, in her stunning dress, blocked my path. Leaving so soon, Nellie? The party's just starting, she sneered, her voice dripping with malice. I tried to step around her, but she shoved me back a little too forcefully. Watch where you're going, she hissed, her eyes gleaming with cruelty. The sudden push caught me off guard, and I stumbled, drawing the attention of those nearby. In seconds, I was surrounded by Sarah's friends, 
Their Avenger. laughter piercing Avenger. through the loud Avenger. music. Avenger. Look at her, can barely stand straight. One of them mocked, pointing directly at me. Cora closer, her voice loud enough for her circle to hear. Guess some things never change, huh? Nellie, always the clumsy one. I felt my cheeks burn with embarrassment and something else. Anger, maybe, or just a deep aching sadness. Just leave me alone, Sarah. I managed to say, my voice shaky but loud. Oh, I will. Don't worry. Wouldn't want to ruin my night by spending another minute with you, she retorted, her words like daggers. The group's laughter followed me as I turned and ran, not stopping until I was safely outside, away from their taunting faces. Tears blurred my vision as I made my way home, the night air doing little to cool my flushed cheeks. My parents were waiting up when I got home, their faces lighting up at the sight of me. But as they took in my tear-streaked face and the defeated slump of my shoulders, their smiles faded. What happened, honey? Mom asked, rushing over to me. I shook my head, unable to find the words to explain the humiliation and hurt. I just want to forget tonight ever happened. I whispered, the tears starting again as I let my parents wrap me in their arms. Their concern and love were a small comfort in the face of my pain. After the prom disaster, I was more than ready to put high school behind me. College was my chance to start fresh, to be someone new. I chose to study medicine, driven by a desire to help others, maybe even understand a bit more about my own struggles through learning about the human body and mind. My first day at medical college felt like stepping onto another planet. Everyone was buzzing with excitement, talking about classes and future careers. I found myself outside the main lecture hall, clutching my schedule when a girl next to me said, hey, you look lost too. First year. Yeah, I replied, grateful for the conversation. Nelly, I introduced myself. I'm so nervous, she asked. Terrified, I admitted with a laugh. Zoe and I stuck together, finding our way to the lecture hall. Sitting down, I felt a nervous excitement bubble up inside me. This was it, my chance to really make something of myself. As weeks turned into months, I started to come into my own. I was doing well in my classes, even making a few friends. Zoe and I became inseparable, studying together and encouraging each other through the tough exams and endless assignments. Our hard work paid off, and I found myself thriving in a way I never had before. The subject of psychosomatic medicine particularly fascinated me, the idea that the mind could have such a profound effect on the body. It resonated with my own experiences, and I delved into the research with a passion. One day, after presenting a paper I'd written on stress and its physical manifestations, my professor pulled me aside. Nellie, your work is impressive. Have you considered specializing in this field? I was taken aback. I, I hadn't really thought about it. I stammered. He nodded thoughtfully. Think about it. You have a knack for understanding the complexities of the human mind and body. It's a rare gift. His encouragement bolstered my confidence, and I began to see a clear path ahead of me. I was going to use my past, my struggles, and turn them into something positive. I was going to help people heal, not just physically, but emotionally too. As the years passed, I graduated from medical college with honors. My sights set on specializing in psychosomatic medicine. My family was proud. And for the first time in a long time, I was proud of myself, too. I had turned my life around, and I was ready to face whatever came next with newfound strength and determination. Zoe hugged me tight on graduation day. Look at us, we made it. Yeah, we did, I said, smiling. Here's to new beginnings. As we threw our caps into the air, I felt a sense of closure. The hurt and isolation of my past were behind me. Ahead lay a future full of possibilities, 
a chance to make a real difference. And I was ready for it, more ready than I'd ever been. After pouring years into researching the profound effects of psycho-emotional stress on the body, my work started gaining traction. I had written extensively on how the turmoil of our minds could physically manifest, leading to real, often severe, health issues. Stress, anxiety, the grind of daily life. It all could lead to negative reactions within the body, spiraling into chronic conditions. What fascinated me most was finding ways to reverse or manage these effects by addressing the root, the mind state. This journey of mine caught the eyes and ears of the medical community. Invitations flooded in, asking me to share my findings with peers, specialists, and even skeptics. It wasn't long before my name became somewhat of a buzzword in medical circles, a symbol of a fresh perspective on holistic healing. My big break came when I was invited as a speaker at the annual health conference. The topic I chose, the mind-body connection, psycho-emotional stress and physical health, struck a chord. As I spoke, I could see the realization dawn on many faces. This wasn't just theory. It was reality, affecting countless lives. I walked off that stage to a sea of applause, my heart racing not from fear but exhilaration. I had overcome my dread of public speaking, facing down an auditorium packed with professionals, and I had held my own. The applause didn't just end with my presentation. Post-conference, an invitation came my way that would have seemed unimaginable years ago a dinner with the who's who of the health sector. Government officials, insurance bigwigs, clinic heads, and industry specialists, all were to be there. As the day of the dinner approached, a mix of excitement and nerves took over. This was more than just a meal. It was a networking goldmine, a chance to discuss potential collaborations to take my work to the next level. I stood in front of my mirror, makeup in hand, determined to look my best. I wasn't just representing my research, I was representing myself, my journey. I chose my dress carefully, the one that always made me feel confident and at ease. As I applied my makeup, I allowed myself a moment to reflect on the significance of this evening. It wasn't about looking better than the other women there. It was about feeling my best, about walking into that restaurant with my head held high knowing I belonged. At this elegant dinner, surrounded by the health sector's elite, I felt like I was finally where I belonged. Compliments flowed my way, each one boosting my confidence more than the last. As the evening wound down, I decided it was time to head home, still riding the high of the night's successes. But as I made my way through the hallway, a familiar voice stopped me in my tracks. It was her, Sarah, my high school nemesis. Wow, look at you. Finally figured out how to dress, huh? Sarah's voice, laced with that same condescending tone, filled the space between us. I turned to face her, finding her just as beautiful and just as arrogant as she'd been back in school. The years had changed us both, but it seemed her spirit remained untouched by time. Long time no see, Sarah, I said calmly. Sarah laughed, a sound that once would have sent me spiraling into anxiety. Seriously, though, how much did you have to borrow to afford a night here? This place isn't cheap. I met her gaze steady and calm. The fear and insecurity she once inspired in me had long since faded, replaced by a strength forged in overcoming and succeeding, despite people like her. Before I could respond, the organizer of the dinner, Mr. Thompson, approached, his concern evident. Is everything all right here? He asked, looking from me to Sarah. I nodded, offering him a smile. Yes, thank you. Just catching up with an old classmate. Sarah, fueled by alcohol and unchecked pride, continued her tirade, oblivious to the discomfort she was causing. She even went as far as to bring her husband into the mix, beckoning him over with the promise of joining in on her mockery. However, the moment her husband, 
whom I recognized as the director of a company interested in my research, realized the situation. His demeanor changed drastically. I'm so sorry, he began, his apology directed at me with a sincerity that took me by surprise. My wife's behavior is unacceptable. He then turned to Sarah, his frustration boiling over. Do you realize what you've done? You're jeopardizing important opportunities with your behavior. I've been looking forward to collaborating with Dr. Nellie Stewart here, and you're making a scene. The sight of him leading Sarah away, her protests echoing down the hallway, was surreal. Moments later, he returned alone, his expression apologetic. I can't tell you how sorry I am for my wife's behavior, he said, his voice earnest. I hope this doesn't affect our potential collaboration. Your work is invaluable. After the dinner, as I was leaving, I saw her, my former tormentor from school, sitting outside on the steps, her makeup smudged from tears. She looked up as I approached, her eyes red and puffy. Hey, can you talk to him for me? You seem to have his ear, she hiccuped, her voice a mix of desperation and vodka. I paused, looking down at her. This was the girl who made my life a living hell back in the day, now asking for my help. The irony wasn't lost on me. I'm not getting involved, I said firmly. This is between you and him. But you are, like, doing so well. He listens to you. She persisted, stumbling over her words. That doesn't make it my business, I replied, my tone leaving no room for further discussion. I left her there on the steps, a mess of her own making. Walking home, I couldn't help but feel a surge of satisfaction. I had come full circle, from the girl who was bullied to someone who stood her ground, unafraid. The news of her divorce came through the grapevine. I'd be lying if I said it didn't give me a sense of vindication. As for me, life was looking up. I had found someone, a man who appreciated me for who I was, someone kind and interesting. We were talking about a future together, something I never thought I'd have. Continuing my work, I felt more motivated than ever. My experiences, both past and present, fueled my passion and my resolve to make a difference. It was a strange journey, but it led me here, to a place of happiness and contentment. For that, I was grateful.